So in this lesson, we are going to start a new course and that is electric circuit theory. And in this course, our main concern is to study the behavior of circuits and how they respond to a given input. Now, since this happens to be the introductory video to this course, we are going to familiarize ourselves with some basic concepts such as electric charge, current, voltage, power, and so on and so forth. So if this is your first time watching this channel, do want to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share this video to all your friends. Now let's get into the lesson by defining, first of all, what an electric charge is. Now an electric charge is said to be the most basic quantity in an electric circuit, and it can simply be defined as the amount of energy or electrons that pass from one body to another by different modes such as induction, conduction or by any specified method. Now we can as well define an electric charge as the physical property of subatomic particles that causes it to experience a force when it is placed in an electric or a magnetic field. Now an electric charge is measured in coulombs and thus it has a symbol Q. Now in senior high school physics, we learned that all matter is made up of fundamental building blocks called atoms. And we said that these atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. We also said that the charge E on an electron is negative and this equal to and is equal to 1.602 times 10 raised to the power negative 19 coulombs so the charge on an electron is negative and is equal in magnitude to 1.602 times 10 raised to the power negative 19 now the proton on the other hand has a positive charge the proton has a positive charge and has the same magnitude as that of the electron. So that's 1.602 times 10 raised to the power negative 19 coulombs. So the only difference here is the charge on the electron is negative while the charge on the proton is positive. Now since the number of electrons and the number of protons in an atom is the same, the charges cancel out and hence we say that the atom is neutrally charged. It leaves the atom neutrally charged. Now by this, we are also able to realize that two types of charges occur naturally. So we have the positive charges, positive charges, and then negative charges. So two types of charges occur naturally, positive charges and then negative charges. Now we also know that like charges, like charges repel each other and then secondly, unlike charges attract each other so like charges repel each other and then unlike charges attract each other now let's move away from this as we consider some basic properties of electric charge that is going to be useful to us throughout this course so we are going to talk about three basic properties of electric charges so basic properties of electric charge so the first we are going to talk about is electric charge or better still charges are additive in nature 
electric charges are additive in nature. Now what this primarily means is that electric charges behave like scalars and thus we can add them directly. So for example, if you consider a system which is made up of or consists of two charges, say K1 and Q2, then the net charge or the total charge in this system, let's say if that is if that is Kn, then that is equal to K1 plus Q2. Again, considering a system, if the number of charges in the system are K1, Q2, K3, K4 through to, let's say Kn, then we can say that the total or the net charge in this system, let's say Qt is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4 plus through to Qn. So that is what you mean by electric charges are additive in nature. Secondly, electric charge is a conserved quantity. Electric charge is a conserved quantity and that is charge can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. Hence, the algebraic sum of charges or the algebraic sum of electric charges in a system does not change. So, the algebraic algebraic sum of electric charges in a system in a system does not change and then thirdly electric charge is a quantized is a quantized quantity and hence it can be expressed as the integral multiple or better still the integer multiple of the basic unit of charge which is e now the basic unit of charge basic unit of charge is also sometimes referred to as the elementary charge elementary charge and that is E and so we know that Q which is the charge is equal to the number of electrons times the elementary charge so we have Q to be the charge we have Q to be the charge we have n to be the number of electrons number of electrons and more specifically n is supposed to be an integer an integer so that is positive or negative whole numbers including zero so n cannot be n cannot be a fraction or an irrational irrational number n cannot be a fraction or an irrational number n has to be an integer that is a positive or negative whole number including zero and then we have e to be the elementary charge so what this primarily means is that any charge that occurs in nature can be expressed as the integer multiple of the elementary charge and notice that n which happens to be the number of electrons has to be an integer that is positive or negative whole numbers including zero so n can be let's say negative two zero four and so on and so forth 
but n cannot be n cannot be a fraction or an irrational value let's say 2.143721488 and so on and so forth now let's move on to the next section where we are going to talk about the flow of electric charges now one property of electric charge is the ability to be moved or to be transferred from one body to the other now let's consider a simple circuit consisting of a battery and a conducting wire now when a conducting wire containing several atoms a conducting wire containing several atoms is connected to a battery charges are forced to move now the movement of charges is such that positive charges move in one direction and then we have negative charges also moving in the opposite direction now we are going to consider this to be the movement movement of positive charges and then that to be the movement of negative charges now the motion or the movement of these charges constitute what we call electric current now in this course we are going to consider electric flow to be the movement of positive charges so electric flow is going to be considered as the movement of positive charges so we are going to consider the conventional flow of current where we have current always leaving the positive terminal of the voltage source and then returning at the negative terminal of the voltage source so we have current to be the movement of positive charges even though we know that considering a metallic conductor the movement of current is due to negatively charged electrons now in conclusion we can define an electric current we can define an electric current as the time rate time rate of change the time rate of change of charge time rate of change of charge and electric current is measured in amperes now we can express this mathematically as i equals dq over dt where i is the electric current electric current q is the electric charge and then t is time so from this we can say that one ampere of current is equal to one column per second because we have the unit for charge to be columns and then we have unit for time to be second so one ampere is equal to one column per second now the charge that is transferred between time t naught so charge that is transferred that is transferred from time t naught to t can be obtained by so considering this equation we have i equals the q dt now what we are going to do is to cross multiply so we are going to have i dt to be equal to 1 times the q so we can express this as the q equals i dt next we are going to integrate both sides so we integrate both sides and then integral of the q becomes q and that is equal to the integral of i dt 
from T naught to T. So this represents the charge that is transferred from T naught to T. Now, the way we define I in this equation does not necessarily need to be a constant value function. Now we know that there are two types of current. We have what you call the DC current and the AC current. So what is the DC current? So the DC current is a current that remains constant with time. So the DC current remains constant or better still does not change with time. It does not change with time. And a typical example of a DC source is battery. Battery. Secondly, we have the AC current to be a current that changes sinusoidally with time. So AC current changes sinusoidally with time. And an example of an AC source is a power generator. So now let's try to draw the graphical representation of the direct current as well as the alternating current. So for the direct current, which is 1, we are going to have the capital I T graph. So the direct current is represented by capital I. And then the alternating current is represented by small i. So for the direct current, that is the capital I T graph, it remains constant, the current remains constant with time. And then for the AC small i t graph, we have current changing sinusoidally with time. So the current is not constant with time. Now, in the next section, we are going to consider a few questions and let's try to solve these questions together.